Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Mr. G Show. That's right, The Mr. G Show's back, and it's getting really close to Christmas time. I hope everybody's having a great holiday season. This isn't really what I would call a Christmas special, but it is a little bit Christmassy, kind of cool. We got some music, we got playing with lightning that we're making with my lightning machine, also known as a Van de Graaff generator. Um, we are also going to um, we're going to play around with centrifugal force a little bit today. We're going to have a shout out Q and A with G. We're going to have a great time. Let's get started. One of the very first things that I want to do on today's show, while it's still light outside, is I want to talk a little bit about centrifugal force. That's right, centrifugal force, not centripetal force. Um, I know the very first. Do you remember the very first? Do try this at home video where I spun a penny on a coat hanger and a lot of people still think that that's fake. That is not fake. Centrifugal forces are the forces that are felt by an object when it's spinning around a center axis. And those forces always push out and away from the center point that it's spinning around. It's a fake force though. It's false. The object itself feels the force, but the force is really not a real force. What do I mean by this? Well, it's simply the object wanting inertia, wanting the object to continue to travel in a straight line and therefore it is pressing against the stationary object that is circling around the center axis. Now what I've built here is like, I'm going to call this the inertia table or the inertia platform. Um, what I've built here is simply a piece of wood with, um, it was just, it's, it's an old piece of wood that was used um, a piece of trim for something. I'm not even sure what this was. I found it in my basement. I already had four holes in the corners drilled and I just took and, and put some string through the holes as you can see here and now I can suspend this like this almost like a, a platform that I can suspend and we're gonna go outside and we're gonna have some fun with this platform and a glass of water so come on let's go. Okay we're outside, we've got our glass of water, you can see that's a real glass of water, we've got our platform. Now I told you it's imperative that the platform is level. This is real glass too. And it's mighty cold outside so this thing could just shatter if it touches something. So I gotta make sure I'm away from any trees or anything like that. And here we go, we're gonna try our, our new inertia swing. Okay, I've got my glass in the center, it looks like it's fairly balanced. Here we go. I'm backing up from the camera so that you can see the whole arc. And here I go. That glass is pretty full. I hope this works. Wow. I'll slow this down for you too, probably, so you can see it even closer. And I'm going to try to stop it. Whoa. We did it. We did it. There's no glue or anything on the board. And that's real water. Okay, our water trick went so well that I, I decided to try one more thing. I'm going to take an egg and I'm going to balance it in a bottle cap, just like that. We're going to put that on our inertia swing and we're going to see if it actually, like this. See that? Look at that. We're going to see if that actually can balance. Wow, it's really unstable already, but we're going to try it. Here we go. I could end up with egg all over me. I'm going to go back here by these trees so that you can see the, a, a wider arc. Here we go. Wow. The egg is balanced right here. Now I'm going to come a little bit in. I'm going to move it around this direction, change the arc of the swing so that you can see the back end of that swing and you see the egg. And I'll slow this down for us as well. And I hope that egg doesn't fly off there and hit my camera. That would stink. We're going to try something. We're going to go over our head like this. Look at this. Look at that. The egg is still on there as well. Whoa. Oh, the egg fell off that time. Uh-oh, it's lost in the snow. Our egg. There it is. The egg was lost in the snow there. Now, is this a real egg? Is it a real egg? 
Is it a raw egg? Let's find out. We'll take our glass that we used earlier. Look at that. Plop. It's a raw egg. That was pretty cool. Amidst the leaves, watching creatures silently. fire for another Q&A with G. Let's see what we've got today. We've got um, we've got a question here which I'm not sure exactly who wrote this. I'm sorry I lost your name somewhere in the shuffle but it says Dear Mr. G I was watching your show and read your t-shirt. What's the weirdest t-shirt you have and what's the most redneck t-shirt you have? Well I'm gonna start with the most redneck t-shirt that I have and it's um, from a little town in southern Ohio that has a pumpkin festival. This shirt's huge on me now now that I've lost a lot of weight. This is the Barnesville Pumpkin Festival t-shirt. And it's a uh, little worn, it's got a hole down here in the bottom, and definitely a very uh, orange tie-dyed redneck t-shirt. So that would be my most redneck. Now the weirdest t-shirt that I have, I'm actually wearing right now. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me, let me turn some light on here for you. There we go. This is a Peter Gabriel concert t-shirt circa probably about 19, I would say 85. And uh, it says Peter Gabriel up here. And it's got these little dancing, dance position men that have got numbers underneath them. Quite worn as well. This guy's almost faded away. And I don't wear this t-shirt a lot because it's kind of a collector's item for me. Um, like it was about 1984-85 Peter Gabriel concert t-shirt. Kind of cool. So this is my um, weirdest t-shirt right here. So, good question. Uh, let's get on to another question. I know that um, Fun Dude 1996 wanted to know if I ever crashed any of my airplanes. And um, yes, I've crashed a lot of airplanes, um, it, it, believe me. When you get to, uh, when you learn to fly radio controlled planes, you will crash a lot of planes. Trust me on this. This goes right into another question. This is from Mr. Shippy131. And um, it says, I'm a big fan of Do Try This at Home. Do you remember the electric airplanes you were flying on the Mr. G Show number six? I was wondering how much they are because I'm thinking about buying one. P.S. I was wondering if you need some kind of um, license to buy dry ice. A um, couple questions there. First of all, radio controlled planes range in price from, including the radio and the airplane, from about $150 just upward from there. So a really small, uh, cheap foam park flyer might run you about 160 bucks, 150 bucks. Um, the foamies that we were flying, the planes themselves run about 120 bucks. I use a radio that runs about $300. It's a, um, it's a programmable, uh, non-crystal radio. It's a uh, 2.4 gigahertz system that has um, basically like a spread spectrum radio that uh, doesn't require any particular channel. It kind of finds a channel and, and that keeps you off of other people's frequencies so you don't wreck because somebody turns their radio on. Okay. Oh yeah, the, the, the dry ice. That's the last thing I want to talk about. The license to buy dry ice. I do not believe that anywhere you need a license to buy dry ice. That's it for Q&A with G. Let's move on. Okay, we're downstairs in the basement, and I'm in a real old piano here that came from one of the either high schools or junior highs around here. My grandfather used to be a principal at the junior high, not too far from where I live, and um, he refinished this piano. It was in really bad shape, and right now it is still in fairly bad shape. The, the wood itself is in good shape, but the actual keys and the tuning of the piano is terrible. It's got a cracked soundboard, but you know what? Um, it's got a distinct sound, and I'm going to play us a dark Christmas piece. That's uh, I won't make it too long, so don't worry. Let's see here. I'm, I'm going to make this up as I go along as well, so bear with me.
<laughs> a haunted Christmas. I'm just kidding around. Let's go have some more fun. Come on. Just sitting here grooving out to some awesome electronica by a YouTube friend of mine named Matt Zildjian. Excellent music, Matt. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a link to Matt's uh, music here in the description of today's video or today's show because um, I think it's worth a listen. I think you guys would like it. So um, that brings us to, let me turn the volume down just a little bit here and I'll just let it play in the background while I do today's shout out. That's right. And today's shout out is going to Puppy Stomper 324, The Noodles Are Lumpy, 1337 Chicken Warrior, Daniel Carmi 305, 000 Hacker, the Ring 0010, also known as AJ Bush, Aaron Flay, Zachary, or should I say Mini MJ 155. Um, we've got Thumper 51 Triple Zero. We've got Super Ninja Ducky, and um, we've also got Mr. Shippy 131. We've got Wicked Lover. We've also got um, oh, this uh, shout out goes to the whole family and Mr. Duggalo Seven. Hi, Double O Seven, and your whole family. And also a special shout out to Harrison, who's up visiting family all the way from Wichita Falls, Texas. Hey, Harrison, I hope you're having a great Christmas, and um, I'll see ya. So here we go with today's shout out. I read all those off my laptop, and we got Matt's music playing in the background. And I'm gonna actually uh, for today's shout out. Let me let me mute your music here, Matt. Here we go. I better get a, a drink of water. Here we go. The shout out. <sighs> Whoa. Whew. Last episode of Do Try This at Home with Mr. G, I was playing around with something called an electrophorus that basically using the triboelectric effect, um, or using tri utilizing triboelectric charge, I was able to lift that metal plate up off of the styrofoam plate and it would cause it to charge up. Well, if you could just keep doing that over and over again, you would be able to build up a charge that would be larger and larger if you had a place to store that charge. Well, what you're looking at right in front of you here is a homemade Van de Graaff generator. It's got a metal top here that's just an upside down metal canister. It's got a piece of PVC here and what goes up in that is a rubber belt that you can see here that's on a pulley system from a motor. This motor came from a blow dryer. This is all made from just, just plain old parts. Here's an old roller skate bearing. Um, I've got two bearings on the top. Our, our drum here that the belt rides across, or our pulley here, not really a pulley, our roller, is this one's made of PVC and the top roller is made of a piece of copper pipe. So the top is copper, the bottom is PVC. These are far apart on the triboelectric scale. And what that means is, is that it means that as the belt keeps passing across the bottom roller onto the top roller, it just keeps going, it's just like separating from that roller, the rubber belt. So it's carrying a charge, it's getting a charge every time it makes contact with the roller and then loses contact, makes contact, loses contact. So it's like a continuous, constant make and break of contact with the roller systems and it carries the charge from the PVC roller up to the top metal roller and then there's another brush up here. You'll notice a brush here as well. This brush goes to a grounding post that I have right here that I can hold on to to make even larger sparks. Now, that belt goes up to a top roller and the top roller has a brush above it. That brush collects the charge and deposits it in our dome here. So let's not talk anymore about it. Let's just watch this thing in action. It's so cool. Okay, one of the first experiments I'm gonna show you with the Van de Graaff generator is I've put some small little pieces of napkin broken up on the top of the generator. Now, the napkins right now in the dome are not charged, but when the dome charges up, it'll in turn charge the pieces of napkin up. Now, they're, they don't, they're not attached in, attached in any way to the dome, so when they get the same charge as the dome, like charges repel, and they should fly off into space. Let's see here. Okay, most of them flew off into space as you saw, which was very cool. Now when I discharge the dome, 
you'll see that that goes back down on there. So that was our first little experiment. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to turn off the lights, and I can't talk to you while I do this, so I just want you to know I'm going to use my arm to draw sparks from the generator. Now, this voltage is in the neighborhood of 150,000 volts to make sparks as long as you're going to see. You're also going to hear ticks more than you'll see sparks. The ticking sounds are the arcs hitting my arm. The sparks that you're seeing are ones that are captured on the video camcorder. However, on the video camera, it has so many frames per second, and the ones that you can't see but can only hear are, are arcs that are occurring between frames. They're so quick that they're, they're so, they, they occur so quickly and disappear so quickly that they actually get between the frames of the video. So let me turn off the lights and draw some arcs to my arm with the 150,000 volt Van de Graaff generator. take an arc or a few of them to my tongue just to show you that it really is not painful even to my tongue and that it's not harmful because it's very high voltage but almost no current whatsoever and this is although it's plugged in to run the motor it wouldn't have to be the motor could be run off of a battery and none of the electricity from the wall socket is what is creating this again it's all being created by the belt and pulley system just in the tribal electric effect I hope you had fun with the Vandy Graph Generator. I sure did. Well, that's it for today's Mr. G Show. But hey, don't press that stop button just yet because at the end of the show, don't forget there's going to be some outtakes and they're going to be pretty cool. So hey, and if you really want to help me out, please subscribe, rate, and comment on all of my videos. It really does help. And please visit mindlessmirth.com and mrgme.com. Uh, the links to those will be in the description of today's Mr. G Show, and also the link to Matt Zildjian's YouTube site will be in the description of today's Mr. G Show. He has some incredible electronic music. I hope you give it a listen. I'm Mr. G. We'll see you next time on The Mr. G Show. Have a great holiday. Bye-bye. We're not going to spill a drop. It's full of water, as you can see, and here we go. Get it going. Here we go. Well, I wasn't thinking about the tree. That was stupid. And today's Q&A with G comes to us from... Um, gee, I don't know. Okay, you'll remember that in our last Just for Fun with... No, I'm sorry, that's wrong. It was not just for fun, it was the Mr. G Show. All right, you'll remember that on our last Mr. G Show, I was playing around with something called the triboelectric effect using a device that was called the, um, uh, okay, you'll remember that in the last, just, dang it, it wasn't that. 
Okay, one of the first experiments that we're going to do with the electrostatic generator is I've broken up a whole bunch of small pieces of napkin on top of the generator. Now, it does me no good to try to talk over the sound of the generator or to blow the napkins off the top of it either. Didn't mean to do that, sorry. Let's try that again. <laughs> 